Could ADHD be affecting your internet pornography consumption? Let's talk about it. Stay tuned. So back when I was in the top of my career, I was constantly having to go to meetings, uh, do tracking, manage projects. Uh, There was a lot going on at the time, and it's perhaps one of the times where I was also highly into porn consumption. And one time in in one specific day, I had missed a meeting, I had lost my keys, I was late to a few things, and I was just pissed uh, because I had I had been, get, been dressed down by uh, one of my other project managers for uh, screwing up that day. And I was reflecting about like, why are we doing this? I didn't understand, you know, why I was missing out on things and I couldn't process what was going on. And then finally, I did a quick internet search, just kind of going over some of the very high level symptoms that I was experiencing. And I found this online diagnostic, and this is back in either 2011 or 2012. I found this online diagnostic and I took it. And it was a very quick diagnostic, but it was supposed to capture the high points of ADHD. And uh, I caught all of them. And I didn't know what ADHD was, so I uh, went on to YouTube of all things real quick. And I found another person who was talking about their diagnosis. And I learned a little bit about it. So I said to myself that I I may just want to investigate with a a clinician to see if there's anything to this. And so I went to, uh, inside of my town, there's a a local diagnostic center. And I went there and I was there for the entire day doing nothing but diagnostics. And boy, was that painful because uh, it was high level cognition testing and they had a assortment of different cognition tests that I went through and I could feel myself screwing up and every single one of them, every single one of them. And uh, by screwing up, I mean, I, I could, I could feel that I was not scoring it to the top of the potential of the test. Uh, one of them was having to memorize a series of things around the room and I could only get three or four deep before I for completely forgotten the sequence and the locations of things that I was being tested for. What I came out of that was not only did I have ADHD, I was well within the spectrum. They wrote up an entire diagnostic release for me and I sat back and I read it. And that was the first time I really had to sit down and process the fact that I was living with a handicap and I had probably had that handicap for most of my adult life. Uh, You see that I had been struggling with school ever since high school. I would um, frequently feel tired during class, had a difficult time paying attention on subjects I didn't like. And I carried through to college as well. I I was always distracted. I was always distracted, but I, I couldn't put a word to that. For me, ADHD was something that you saw with hyperactive kids, you know, the kids that were constantly bouncing all over the room. And I was on the other side of the spectrum. So I was what they called inattentive ADHD. I had a hard time paying attention uh, when things didn't interest me. And since then, I have learned to kind of live with my disorder. I recognize that it, it sometimes it can be a superpower. Sometimes I have the capability of hyper focusing when things are interesting. So much so that people are like, "Man, why don't you just take a break from things?" And I don't. When I'm inter- and when I'm really into something, I just keep plowing through. But at other times, it's hard. It's very difficult for me to get jump started on things I may not be interested in. So there's that dynamic of that living inside of my life. And then there's also my pornography addiction. In other words, I have a difficult time trying to stop using pornography. And when I am in that zone, when I'm hyper-focused, I can really lean in. I could be watching porn all day if I choose to. If I allowed myself to, I would be watching porn nonstop. And that's the reality of it. I lived a good chunk of my life consuming porn on binges. 
So that's a part of who I am. So when I started seeing some of the scholarly articles that tied together ADHD and pornography consumption, my ears started perking up. Okay, I'm going to go over a few things uh, just to kind of get you guys caught up on like my thought process and what some of the research out there says. And we'll also uh, together go over some videos that I found that are pretty informative. Uh, first, I'd like to start off at the NIH website, and this one is an abstract. Uh, for this study, it's called Sexual Development in ADHD and Internet Pornography Consumption. Uh, abstract states, development of sexual identity during adolescence is a major process of transition in additional life, which is in the case of ADHD specifically interacts with other ontogenic, pathological, and psychological conditions. According to recent findings, growing consumption of internet pornography, mainly in male ADHD population, is closely related to compulsive sexual behavior and hypersexuality. Recent findings have also indicated that the consumption of internet pornography in ADHD individuals and other sexual activities may serve as a mood-altering self-medication, which may help to cope with stressful events and decreasing depression and anxiety. Taken together, recent findings indicate that the internet pornography consumption, mainly in ADHD individuals, is closely related to stressful experiences, anxiety, depression, and identity problems in partnerships with significantly increase, which in significantly increase their vulnerability to so-called problematic porn use and other forms of addictive sexual behavior. From this developmental perspective, problematic porn use in ADHD individuals represents significant epidemiological problems which require further research, mainly with focus on clinical diagnostics and treatment. All right, so that to me uh, states quite succinctly a lot of the things that I was dealing with when I was growing up, right? So I know that I had ADHD. I've probably had it for most of my adulthood and probably my late teens. And, you know, as it, as it states here, the self-medication aspect of it, man, I've been dealing with stress my entire life. It's what I talk about primarily on my channel here. Uh, so the fact that, you know, it's referencing the exact behaviors I was going through, I can really identify with this on a personal level. All right, let's go down to the section entitled Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Impulsivity, and Hypersexuality. Although ADHD has likely no direct influence on individual development on a sexual maturation in comparison to individuals without ADHD, there is evidence that the psychological development of sexual identity and functions is significantly affected by ADHD. In addition, ADHD has frequent manifestations of comorbidities, that's when you have lots of problems going on, mainly mood disorders and anxiety disorders, and frequently comorbid disorder related to ADHD is hypersexuality. Some studies have shown positive associations between impulsivity and hypersexuality, and inattentive symptoms may be related to hypersexuality. In addition, some findings suggest that sexual activities may serve as mood-altering self-medication process in some individuals with ADHD. Basic mechanisms for the self-medication may be reward deficiency, and that is typical of ADHD, which can be related to addictive, impulsive, compulsive, and risky sexual behaviors. Other studies indicate that conduct, that conduct problems during childhood and adolescence also may be a relative factor of the relationship between ADHD and risky sexual behaviors. In addition, conduct problems may also be associated with in increased impulsive disorders. In this context, some findings suggest that risky sexual behaviors in ADHD individuals represents a dysfunctional form of emotional regulation, which may be a re relevant risk factor for sexual, uh, sexual victimization. In addition, some studies show that people with ADHD have increased tendencies to, to promiscuity, and according to recent findings, ADHD individuals have more sexual partners than people without ADHD. As epidemiological findings indicate, PPU, 
in ADHD population, but also in the addition and general populations, becomes a widespread problem for mental health due to unlimited access to pornography material on the internet and the availability of the internet. And recent evidence shows that a significant percentage of people, five to 14%, who use pornography may encounter problematic porn use. In the 11th edition of the International Classification of Disease, PPU is characterized by per persistent, excessive, or compulsive use of pornographic content and intensive participation in it, despite distress and adverse consequences. Nonetheless, some researchers consider the conceptualization of PPU as an impulsive control disorder or highly addictive form of sexual behavior. In the context of the treatment of ADHD individuals, it is important to take into account their PPU-related problems may be related to the reward to deficiency and increased sensitivity, mainly because there is evidence that the prefrontal cortex is overly active in people with ADHD, that it's that is relative to attention deficits, which may cause a self-regulatory attempts manifesting in increased needs to experience sexual desires. From these perspectives, PPU and other, F and other addictive forms of sexual behavior in ADHD individuals represents significant epidemiological problems, which require further clinical research mainly focused on underlying physiopsychological mechanisms, clinical diagnostics, and treatment options. All right, let's go to a person that I've been following online for a while. Uh, this is Dr. Trish Lee. She is a cognitive neuroscientist, and uh, she talks a lot about ADHD and the relationships to hypersexual uh, function and pornographic uh, pornography use. Uh, I wanted to just give you a, a chance to look at her website, and we'll talk a little bit about this. She's also an active YouTuber. I recommend just going out and listening to some of her videos if you get the chance. Uh, let's start from the top. The connection is real. The unspoken connection between pornography and ADHD is real, but often unrecognized. Those who struggle with ADHD have a higher risk of becoming addicted to porn due to the brain pattern of ADHD. Science shows people with ADHD might use porn as self-medication. Therefore, understanding how the ADHD brain works and how it can fall victim to porn can help you develop the self-care mechanisms you need so that you don't fall victim to the spell of the screen. All right, let's scroll down. I'm going to I'm going to cut right down to one of her videos and we'll just kind of react to it together. Let's let's listen in. What does Trish have to say? Did you know that there is an unspoken connection between ADHD and porn addiction? Well, I'm Dr. Trish Lee, and in today's video, I want to explain that connection to you. So in this video, the first thing that we're going to do is talk about ADHD. What is it? What causes it? How do you know if you have it? Then number two, let's break down porn addiction. What is it? What does it look like? How do you know if you are struggling with it? And then lastly, number three, what is the connection between the two of them and what can you do about it? All right, let's start with ADHD. ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder. So what that means is that it's brain development. So if you have been diagnosed with adult onset ADHD, that's not a thing. ADHD is neurodevelopmental. You were born with it and it happened within your development. Now, not to say you can't struggle with ADHD symptoms that be So I think that's an important distinction. Uh, what Dr. Lee is suggesting here is that, you know, you're born with ADHD, you just don't fall into it. So despite the fact that I might have experienced ADHD symptoms uh, inside of my teen years, I likely always had it. It just was sitting there as, a, as something that had to manifest. So let's continue began in adulthood because we know that especially if you use the screen and consume pornography with excessive amounts that can create the brain pattern that gives you ADHD symptoms but ADHD in and of itself is a neurodevelopmental disorder so what causes it is a brain pattern that 
needs excessive stimulation because it is running too slow. It is a brain pattern with excessive use of the electrical energy speed theta. Theta is the slow speed that helps your brain fall asleep at night. But if you're using too much theta within the day, it makes it very difficult to attend, to focus, it might create fidgeting, it might create excessive movement, it may make it difficult for you to be motivated to task and stay there. Yep, sounds like me. That's very similar to what happens if you watch too much porn. We'll get there in a minute. Mm. But ADHD, again, is the brain pattern that you were born with that makes it so that your brain is using too much slow speed. We know from the science that ADHD and anxiety are highly correlated. And the reason that happens is because if you're born with a brain that's running too slow, your brain will kick it into high gear using excessive high beta, extra fast brain speed to offset that slowing. So what happens is now your brain's moving extra slow and the compensatory pattern of extra fast. So I've always used this analogy of your brain as a car that's driving down the road. To get to where you want to go, your brain needs to go 45 miles per hour, right? You get there on time, but you don't crash. But what your brain's doing if you struggle with ADHD is you're going 25 miles per hour. You're going much slower than you need to to get where you want to go in an optimal fashion. So your brain pushes that gas pedal, pedal to the metal. So inherently, your brain's going 25, but with this compensatory strategy, now you're going 75. And a lot of times that can create crashes. So the ADHD pattern is one of too much slowing and most times also too much fast speed. How can you know this for sure? Get a QEEG brain map. So when you have an assessment that looks at not only your behaviors. By the way, I just want to say that while I'm covering her content, obviously she is a neurologist. She has these specific diagnostics that she uses. I am not suggesting any of this. This is just so that you can hear what she does to her approach. Um, but obviously there's a lot more. When I was going through my own diagnostic, it was uh, not on the neurological side per se. Like they were not hooking me up to an EEG. They were basically doing their own types of behavior tests on me. And uh, it was a full battery of tests. So they cover just about every conceivable cognitive area you could imagine but I was never have I, they never had to hook wires up to me in order to study my brain patterns so this is a different approach right if you go to your own local clinic you may not get the same approach what she's doing is trying to sell a service where she provides this sort of thing as an extra way to look at the brain let's continue but your actual brain performance pattern the one that's in there that a professional can visualize, see it, and share the findings with you, then you know for sure if your brain is operating in the ADHD mode. There is a true brain pattern, and looking at theta to beta ratio, they call it the TBR, can show you if your brain is running in the ADHD manner. That is exactly what me and my team do. We're able to show you how your brain is performing and then show you how to optimize it. Now, a disclaimer on neurodiversity here. I'm not saying that anybody should change their brain pattern if they're happy with it. What I'm saying is that if you're struggling with ADHD symptoms and they're holding you back, like they hold so many people back, you can in fact optimize your brain pattern and take your brain out of these extremes and teach your brain to function in the optimal mode of calm focus. Real quick while she was talking about calm focus, um, I just found that interesting because I sort of stumbled upon calm focus as a tactic on my own. Uh, this came, of course, once I got into the recovery scene. I started uh, doing yoga, I started doing meditation, and I was doing CBT practices. CBT came through a clinician, uh, but the rest of it I was just doing on my own. And yes, it works. 
absolutely works. Um, I feel that it's a fantastic way of being able to work within the bounds of your ADHD to kind of use that as a mechanism for uh, helping your mind stay focused because the very process of going through a meditative state, whether you're actually doing yoga or if you're using other forms of meditation, is trying to teach your brain to stay in that space where it has to focus, where it has to pay attention. And believe it or not, a lot of that works. And it pays off, not only for ADHD related issues, but I shall probably talk about with the pornography as well. Your symptoms go away and your life improves. All right. so. That's ADHD. Now let's move on to porn addiction. Porn use usually starts as use first in adolescence, childhood, or young adulthood. So when you were young, you found porn and it gave your brain the best feeling that it probably ever had. Oh, did it. So what happened in those young years and days was that your brain got a high level of stimulation. This is exactly what the ADHD brain is looking for to stimulate it and calm it down. So we know from the science, if you struggle with the ADHD brain pattern, you're more at risk for being extra aroused by pornography. So it be very important point, very important point. Begins is use when you're young and likely shifts to misuse at some point where you start using it more, you start getting dependent on it, which shifts into abuse. So now maybe you've missed work because you lost track of time because you're watching porn, or maybe it's shifted into a compulsion where you can feel that pull back to the screen. Your partner leaves for work, you feel like you want to watch it instead of getting ready to go to work yourself. Well, that's what we've always identified as a craving, right? So uh, I, and, and listen, although the doctor's talking about this specifically within the context of ADHD, obviously a craving can happen to people who are just neurotypical. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's something that can happen to just about anybody, but certainly for us ADHDers, yeah, we're going to experience that as well. When you're in the middle of your workday, you feel that pull. That pull is a compulsion. And we know that the International Classification of Diseases has identified compulsive sexual behavior disorder as a true health concern. And pornography use is the number one way that that manifests. That pull is that compulsion. And that compulsion develops even further into addiction. The difference is, if you fall into addiction, now you need porn to feel okay and your life feels miserable or it feels incomplete when you're out in the world because your brain has changed its mechanisms on the inside to need porn to feel good. You need it to be able to get through your life. That's a beautiful summary of the way I was. Beautiful summary. I mean, that encapsulates everything that I was going through. That is not a place I want you to be, my friend. I want you to break free from that if you're struggling with it. That's what porn addiction entails. The addiction piece is now you need it. And it changes the brain me mechanism so there's a dopamine deficit when you're in the world. There's not enough pleasure and happiness. But when you think about porn in the screen, you get a drip of dopamine which pulls you back into the screen so that you get that dopamine deluge, that flood that drowns out the real world and makes you feel good for a little while. But what happens if you get roped into this loop of porn addiction is that you actually increase alpha, that medium speed of calm, you increase it too much. I like to refer to alpha as couch mode. So your brain, when it's functioning optimally, should be able to relax and chill out on the couch and should be able to focus and do your best work to medium speeds, alpha and low beta. Alpha is couch mode. And if you consume a lot of pornography, you are using much too much alpha because your brain's been flooded with dopamine. Now you're stuck in couch mode. You're not motivated to get your best work done. All you can think about is feeling good and laying around with that good feeling. Yep. That's how you know if you're thinking about getting back into the screen, 
That's how you know your brain is dependent on dopamine to feel good. Now, how are the wires crossed in terms of ADHD and porn addiction? Well, I've already shared that we know that the ADHD brain wants stimulation and calming more than an optimal brain. And we know from research that the personality types, perhaps the brain pattern that gives you the feelings of impulsivity and not being able to calm down, we know that that is a driving force back into the screen. So there are traits that overlap and a an ability to be able to slow down as a driving force for putting you back in front of the screen. I think that's a, that's a very, very succinct point and something to always keep, be mindful of it, right? It's like you're, you're being mindful of the fact that this, this sort of thing is out there. Again, this loop makes it so that if you have the ADHD brain pattern, using porn worsens it not makes it better. So you're reinforcing those neural pathways of ADHD instead of doing things in your life that would help those pathways to die down hmm. so that you could focus and be motivated. So if you consume porn and if you are struggling with ADHD symptoms like lack of focus, lack of motivation, difficulty starting tasks and finishing them, then there's something going on with your brain pattern. I would love for you to get it assessed. That's something that I do. And if you don't want to work with me, have someone assess your brain pattern using a fundamental four point assessment, which is exactly what we do. Neuro, we look at brain performance pattern. Bio, we look at other bio feedback mechanisms and we look at how your heart rate, your breathing, body accelerometer, how still you're able to be or how much fidgeting there might be involved. We look at many other biological mechanisms and it's a social approach too. We look at your environment and the way that you're using your brain, how it impacts your brain performance pattern like porn consumption. And we look at how those wires are crossed and tangled so that we can untangle them, improve your brain performance pattern and help you rock out your best life. So if you're interested, please go over to drtrishlee.com. You'll okay, so we'll stop it there because I think the rest of this is just going to be your pitch for her, uh, her organization. I encourage you to check out more of Dr. Lee's content. She has some really good videos out there. I think the summary from this is that if you happen to have ADHD, uh, it absolutely does make you more vulnerable for uh, PPU uh, problematic porn use. So it's one of those things that if you if you think that you have it, right, if you haven't been diagnosed yet, maybe start looking at that. You know, if, you, if you're currently working right now and you're on insurance, uh, check with your insurance provider. I know in my situation, uh, even though that was over 10 years ago for me, it was 100% covered by my insurance policy. So, uh, you know, even if it's like 80 or 50%, it's money well invested. At least you know what you're dealing with at that point. Um, you, you don't necessarily have to go through the uh, diagnostic that Dr. Lee is providing here. Um, you know, you go with the more rudimentary stuff, uh, you know, sometimes the simple diagnostics will at least give you the yes, you, you fall within the spectrum of ADHD. And then what the larger tests tend to do is it tends to refine like, where do you fall on that spectrum, right? Are you on the more of the uh, inattentive side or are you more on the hyperactive side? I'd like to make sure that I conclude with making sure that you understand you can have ADHD. You may not have ADHD, right? Both of those things can exist. Um, you may not have a porn addiction. You may have a porn addiction. You could have ADHD and a porn addiction. You may not have ADHD and have a porn addiction. Makes sense? So no matter where you're at, right, the addiction side of the equation, where it's where I come in, where we're talking about recovery and just being able to go in and make a better self and kind of really dig into what are some of the tools that are going to help me out. 
when you're on that side of it, when you're exclusively on the recovery, it's all access, man. It doesn't matter if you have ADHD or if you don't have ADHD. Everybody who's on that side gets access to the tools. However, if you happen to have ADHD, you may be more prone to some of the problems that are presented inside of porn addiction, right? And so this is information. This is the knowledge that you need to be able to help diagnose, and recover from whatever happens to be beating you down right now. And so I hope this information is helpful to you. Certainly, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can leave them down below or DM me out on X. I don't make any money from any of the things I do here. All of this is my 12th step giving back to the addict who still suffers. Thank you for listening and please stay on that road to recovery.